Ashley Marsh here interviewing Gerald Eiffel, who's one of my role models and he also coaches me. So Gerald, what were the main obstacles you had to face when training to become a footballer? The main obstacles is, for me, were getting the getting the trials, getting the right trials. Yeah. Or getting, not even the right ones, just getting any trials. Yeah. Uh, so when I was about 12, 13, mm. it, wasn't as, it wasn't as technologically advanced. Yeah. In, communication so I had to send letters to all the clubs to get like yeah wow that's long yeah it's proper long I sent I sent about 30 letters to the like to Premier League clubs or London clubs and any clubs that are around that were professional and I think sending all of those letters I got two responses to say no (laughs) that's not good (laughs) wow so that area is if you're not seen, then you have to be very uh, proactive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that was probably the main obstacle at my age because they said I was too young. Yeah. Uh, before I got seen, they said, "Oh, you're too young. You need to be at a professional club by the time you're probably 11, 12 years old." Wow. And if you're not at one, then it's probably you're probably not going to make it. And that, that's the kind of stuff I used to hear. Oh wow! Wow, that is. That's not great. No. So, also, just to let um, other people know who will be watching this, can you, like, explain who you are and who you played for and, like, your career? Okay, so, I'm Jarrell Eiffel. Um, I played for Watford, Swindon, Aberdeen, um, Bristol Rovers, Kettering, uh, and then went semi-professionally played for about three clubs semi-professionally wow. over cool. the seven seven years 17 years oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right that's cool that's cool so who are your role or your main role models when you're growing up um i had my main one was paul Lintz. oh yeah yeah i know um, so he was my main one because obviously being an English guy and he was a black guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to be like him. <laughs> and he, was good guy. he was able to go and play outside of England, which was good. So there's not many um, mm. young um, black English players that would leave the country. Mm. And one of them, um, he was able to go to Inter Milan and be successful. Wow, not yeah. just he was actually successful. Um, and so watching him and then other than that there was um, Ronaldo as in buck two for Ronaldo yeah. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. the new one um, so yeah watching him he was he was revolutionary at the time yeah so yeah they were my two two role models cool when did you when did you start taking football seriously and would you say there's like a specific age that you must start to train to be popular? Um, I think I always took football seriously because I always loved it. Mm, yeah. You never know how far you're going to take it until someone says you're good. Yeah, that's true. You know? So at first I started playing, you know, I was at primary school when I was first playing. Mm. Used to your team, uh, play for your school. Um, and then I got picked for my district, uh, which which was Brent, yeah. which was a West London borough. So you start playing for Brent, and when you play for your borough, you can get seen more easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I got I got scouted by um, Arsenal, Charlton, and QPR. Wow. Um, one of the years, mm. and that's you okay. I'm half decent because these guys are in interest. Yeah. Um, but I left my borough you know, for a few... Well, I'm not sure why. There's a few personal reasons, I believe. My dad didn't drive at the time. Mm. Uh, so it was hard to get down there. Oh, okay. And so I was going the next season. And Arsenal actually came back the next season to see if I was still there. Uh, really? Yeah. I missed that opportunity there. Oh. So. That's not great. <laughs> 
at that point, um, I knew I'd start taking it a bit more seriously. Yeah. Um, by playing more often, um, by trying to identify a position as well, rather than just like, oh, I want to play striker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did play striker. Well, I played midfield. Um, so I was top scorer in my in my Sunday football team. Wow. But we were beating like 10 goals. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, I, I used to get upset because I used to hate losing. <laughs> so I was one of them guys, that if I lost, I'd be crying yeah. at it. <laughs> like, using anymore I'm going to play defence <laughs> so that's how I started playing defence oh yeah alright um, if you were 15 years younger what would you have done differently to give yourself the be- a better opportunity be more uh, sorry be more pro- uh, be, a, be more professional at yeah. a younger um, in terms of looking after your body understanding nutrition yeah. understanding the, the importance of training extra training mm. so when you're young your mindset is to do what they tell you to do yeah it's and it, you know you play in the park i used to train with my dad you never knew it was extra training because you used to just find it fun exactly. but actually if if you get to like, well, well, what am I now? I'm 37 now. So if I was able to tell my 22-year-old self, or my 20, yeah, 22-year-old self, yeah. it would be just to always work on your craft. Mm. You know, oh, just yeah. keep working on it. Because otherwise, all the days off, you go, oh, day off, let's go. And you take a day off. <laughs> so, because you do train hard, don't get me wrong. I was a professional since. So when you train hard, you, you just want a day off every so often. Yeah. But actually, there's nothing wrong with doing a, a little bit extra, especially yeah. with our. That's true. That's true. We only train till twelve o'clock. Oh. You know, days, so you start at ten. Yeah. You finish maybe one o'clock once the season starts. The only time you'll do a double session, which is the whole day, is when it's pre-season. Mm. So, staying on for a couple of hours and doing a few more bits of training. Yeah. What would you do after training? What would I do after training? Yeah. Uh, depend what stage of life I was at. If I, when I was a teenager, me and my 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 teammates, we'd go to the to the spa that we were affiliated with, yeah. And we'd go and sit in the jacuzzi sauna, have a <laughs> swim, go oh. back in the jacuzzi, sauna. Wow. <laughs> so most of the time, from seventeen to probably about nineteen, we that's all I used to do is finish training. I had nothing else to do. Wow. And so about six of us and we'd all just go to the spa and just chill out there for about three hours Jeez, and then that's decent relaxed <laughs> oh, that's good that's good um i would say when i was in my 20s um i had my son so and i lived f- further away from from my training ground so yeah. i used to live in watford and then play for swindon town so that was like an hour and 30 minute drive yeah so as soon as training finished, I used to try and get back home and look up, help look after my little one. Oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't spend too much time away. Wow. Uh, so that in my in my twenties, that's what I would do. I'd just try and get home as soon as possible. So as soon as training finished, quick shower, have my lunch, boom, yeah. off down the motorway. And last question: Who's the best player you played against in your whole career? Ooh. I would say, Chris, uh, it, was a, it was a pre-season, it was a pre-season friendly in Italy, mm. played against Inter Milan. And so we played against, the team at that time had uh, Ronaldo play, uh, he wasn't playing, supposed to be a comeback game. And so I met him, but he didn't get us. Oh. So I've got a, I've got a framed shirt at, in my house oh, that's um, with him. Um, with his autograph nice. but in there was also Christian Vieri who played for Italy yeah. and Clarence Seedorf yeah yeah but I played right back that game mm. and so and we drew 2-2 so I was quite proud of that because I was only wow. 18 18 at the time really that yeah. Wow. yeah so that was that's probably the most 
um, high calibre player that we played against. Wow, that is... Played against Peter Crouch as well. Yeah. Yeah. You're friendly um because i played lower level lower leagues mm. you didn't get to play against like the top top players which is always something i always wanted to do yeah, yeah. so other than that it was when i played in the reserve league played against mm. jermaine defoe uh, uh, quite a few oh. times um but he's really he was really good was he really, yeah did he stand um, out yeah wow. i was a center he embarrassed me a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> This guy's good. <laughs> but say my my reserve, my Watford Reserve League, uh, reserve team won the Premier Reserve League. Oh, wow. We actually won the league um, that, in, our, in our area. So it was all the London clubs, Tottenham, Arsenal, yeah. uh, Chelsea, wow. and any of the London clubs. And we actually won the league for that. So that was a good achievement. Yeah, that is a really good achievement. Yeah, so I have that medal. I have a Barclays. Oh, really? Barclays Premier Reserve League winners medal. Was there anyone that went on to become really good from that team? Um, yeah, that was uh, Ashley Young. And that was um, Lloyd Doyley, who who played for Watford for his, for pretty much his whole adult career. Played over five hundred. Uh, Anthony McNamee went on to play in the Premier League but there was quite a few players that ended up doing quite well for themselves in their career wow, so, that's very decent yeah, yeah cool. Oh, thanks very much for joining me yeah, no problem yeah. good to see you yeah. <laughs> how's the training going anyway yeah yeah it's going good it's good are you back in now uh, yeah we had a match a few days ago okay we'll score we lost 16-2 or something. 16-2? Yeah. They were the best team in Wiltshire, apparently, or something like that. Really? Yeah. But how did you play individually? I think I played quite well, yeah. But yeah. a couple of our strong players were missing. Mm. Yeah. Fair dudes, fair dudes.